I call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, July 16, 2019. Roll call. 12 are present, Your Honor. We have a quorum and we'll proceed. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Now we're on to the invocation. The Alder from the Fourth will lead us. Thank you. Um, in honor of the uh, 50th anniversary of the launching of the Apollo 11, I have a quote from President John Kennedy, the man who started that whole program. And it goes like this. A man does what he must in spite of personal consequences, in spite of obstacles and dangers, and that is the basis of all human morality. Thank you, Alder. Approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by the alder from the third, seconded by the alder from the second, the uh, seventh rather. Any corrections that need to be made? Seeing no requests. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The minutes have been approved. Approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by alder from the seventh, seconded by alder from the eighth. Any changes you'd like to make? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. On to the report of the mayor. Uh, so just a few things to note. Um, had the pleasure of attending the Open Streets uh, this past weekend, which I think was a, was a great success. So just wanted to thank uh, Aurora Baker and all the sponsors and volunteers who played a role in making that happen. Um, I did, uh, on the urging of my children, attempt to participate in some of the uh, Ninja Warrior activities, which were not so successful, but um, other than that, we had a great time. Um, also coming up, looking forward here, uh, we do have the Shipyard Open House that I wanted to note. So that is tomorrow night from 3 to 8 at the Old Fort Square. Um, to this point, I think we've had really robust public input, and so again, encouraging folks to, to come out and provide their feedback based on um, what we will be voting on tonight. Also, uh, not this coming weekend, but the following one, Tall Ships are going to be in town. So nine Tall Ships. I think we were one of 11 port cities in the uh, in the in uh, North America that have the benefit of, of these Tall Ships coming into town. So encouraging folks to to go out and uh, take in some of those activities. Um, this is I think we had them a couple years back. So just every few years we have the pleasure of, of having, the, having the Tall Ships in town. Um, so we're pretty lucky to have them. Finally, I um, just wanted to uh, throw something out to you all as council members and to the public. Um, I was invited to testify by Senator Baldwin um, to a subcommittee of the, the Senate Commerce Committee. And the title of the hearing is America's Waterfronts Addressing Economic, Recreational, and Environmental Challenges. Um, so as a coastal community, one that's experienced um, some flooding in recent days, um, they reached out to us and, and extended the invitation. So wanted you all to know that that was happening on July 23rd. Um, so it's a tight timeline, just got the invitation, I think, last week. Um, but if you all have priorities, things that, that you want me to include, as I said, this goes to the council members and members of the public, please feel free to reach out and, and let me know what you'd like me to tell the senators. So with that, uh, that concludes my report. We are on to announcements. All right. Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to take a moment to, uh, and, and I know that obviously, I mean, crimes happen a lot in our community, but I just want to take a moment to commend Chief Smith, Acting Commander uh, John Laux. Uh, as well as uh, Community Police Officer Andrew Lenz. They've been very informative of the, the unfortunate drive-by shooting that had occurred uh, near the border of my, my district and Alderweary's district. And you know, within six months, they, uh, six, excuse me, within six minutes, they had those individuals apprehended. Um, and it was very quick work by our police department. And I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to, to emphasize why community policing is so important um, and while this is one of those unfortunate incidents that obviously found its way into the public, uh, I, I shiver to think uh, the number of incidents that our officers are very successful with, uh, with uh, I guess, preventing. So uh, thank you, Chief Smith, to you and your department. Duly noted. Thanks, Alder. Alder for <laughs> 
Alder from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I wholeheartedly agree with Alder Johnson. That was amazing police work, great response time, uh, in incredible, really. Um, I also wanted to talk on this because my, my kids wouldn't uh, let me go if I didn't. But uh, every year, uh, the Parks Department has their g game day at, at uh at Fisk Park and all the different uh, parks around the city come, and, and Colburn won. So I just had to congratulate Colburn <laughs> on winning. So that's all. Thanks. Excellent. Congratulations to Colburn. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, brought to you from On Broadway, Inc., the Levitt Amp music <laughs> series. It's every Tuesday as we speak. It's going on. It's from 5 to 8. Enjoy live original music by National Acts in the Broadway District. The free concert series will take place every Tuesday at Light Memorial Park, which is my district, including on-site food trucks and placemaking activities, which I think is like hula hooping and stuff. I don't know. I'm not sure what a placemaking activity is, but Jenga. Uh, uh, and Tuesdays from six to seven thirty, the Cellcom Children's Edible Garden in front of the Central Library extends the library's role in summer education and literacy. Drop in for an informal tour and ask questions about gardening. And then last but not least, if I can scroll up a little, there we go. Uh, summer uh, music in the park, music, food trucks, Whitney Park. Uh, Thursdays through August 8th, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., presented by Pops Tires. Uh, come see Third Degree uh, this Thursday, and then there's Eddie Beeble and Vicky, Bass and Vicky Basser. Listening party. Huh? I said listening party. <laughs> Jerry Volker and the Jolly Giant. So uh, a lot of activity stuff going on. There's some fun, some fun free stuff to do. Thank you. Good stuff. Thanks, Alder. Any other announcements? Alder from the 6th. Yes, um, I wanted to mention I was at Pampern Park. Uh, the county had their uh, employee picnic, and I was talking to the executive, uh, Troy Streckenbach, and I wanted to say um, I want to congratulate Eric, um, our mayor, on the uh, congenial uh, work that you two are doing. Um, Troy is very appreciative. Very good. That was one of the things. Another thing um, I wanted to bring up on Friday, they're talking about the heat index over 105. And I did talk this morning, I went over to Bay Beach, talked to the manager. He did say we don't close on hot days, but I would make a request. I don't know how we can do this. I think that if it's true in the morning that they do uh, believe it's going to be over 105, I believe Bay Beach should be closed in the afternoon. Because I really are, I'm concerned about the employees, those kids sitting out there. I know they do look out for them. They give them water and different things. But somebody might be very susceptible to the heat. And I just think it would be uh, more advantageous for the city just to close it down. OK. Appreciate that comment. Although we can certainly talk to Director Ditchite offline here and yeah. discuss some plans. So, OK. Thank, thank you. you. Any other announcements? All right, with that, we are on to presentations. So Laura Schley, the public arts coordinator, will present the sidewalk poetry program along with the selected poems and poets. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit of background about uh, this presentation tonight. Uh, a few months ago, the Green Bay Public Arts Commission received a proclamation from the mayor acknowledging April as National Poetry Month in Green Bay. Uh, and to celebrate this occasion, uh, the Public Arts Commission released a contest, basically, requesting poem, poem submissions for our sidewalk poetry program. Uh, this project is similar to other programs that are happening in Appleton and St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, where original poems are submitted and then they're eventually made into concrete stamps uh, that are imprinted into sidewalks around the city that are already in need of repair or replacement uh, around the city. So during the month of April, we actually received over 40 original submissions from Green Bay residents, both young and young at heart. 
Uh, it was hard work, but eventually we were narrowed it down to five poems, uh, and several of these poets are able to join me this evening uh, to share their poem and explain a little bit about the inspiration behind it. Uh, so I'm going to kick things off. Unfortunately, two poets weren't able to join us, so I'll kick things off uh, with our first poem here. It is called Weight of the World by Kujo Majak. The weight of the world rests upon the tree, but still she stands, <coughs> empowering those around her with breath exhaled, yet however mighty her force of will, she still must inhale. He didn't give me a description behind it, but I'm sure it's very deep and meaningful. Um, and then also I have Midnight Sailor by Doris Bezo. Midnight Sailor. Stars have fallen to earth, their light quivers on indigo waves. He raises white sails, sets an even course down the silver path of the moon. Uh, when I asked Doris about the meaning behind this poem, she said that she was sitting by the lake one night uh, and the stars were shining so bright and reflecting on the water that it looked like there was another sky. Uh, and the moon made this path down the lake and she just dreamed what would it be like to sail down the lake. Um, she said it was a very beautiful night. So that's Doris' poem. Uh, I will now invite all of our other poets up here. Uh, Shelley, if you would like to go first. Thank you, my name is Shelley Paul. You might say home is where you lay your head. Home for me is not wanting to be anywhere instead. So my poem, though short and sweet, um, it's about finding a sense of ownership in your own community. I wanted something that would resonate with everyone who lives here and joins us in our community. Um, it's about actively choosing where you want to settle down. Um, for me, it was college, UW-Green Bay, that brought me here many, many years ago. And uh, from there, I kind of put down my roots. I found my fit. And uh, that's the sentiment I wanted to share through my poem today. Thank you. Looking at a clock, if you look close to a clock, it looks like a person with a mustache. <laughs> well, mine is a part of the song, so unfortunately for you, you have to listen to the whole thing. So. Um, uh, my poem is submitted was um, the verse of the song, the first verse actually, and the song is called The Resolution. It's about looking for a way forward after getting divorced. Like many other people, I went on a through hike and that's where I looked for my answers and that's what the song's about. Become another creature amongst the seasons change. Beholden to the spring in the solitude of the range thankful for the struggle when i finally understand a life somehow so simple so undecided and grand the resolution i seek if it can be found has to be somewhere amid the wilderness abound just let me carry on, let this path never end. Just give me time to find the meaning in all of this. Every step closer is to a prison that awaits, where society approves and everyone has been tamed. So I pull my straps tighter, grip my poles just so. Keep my wits about me, cherish the miles left to go. The resolution I seek, if it can be found, has to be somewhere amid the wilderness abound. Just let me carry on, let this path never end. Just give me time to find 
the meaning in all of this. Cause when it's all over, life still lies in wait. I'll stand resolute in the decisions I have made. Thank you guys for sharing your work. Um, just wanted to kind of update you on the progress now. Uh, the stamps are currently being fabricated uh, and should arrive later this month. And we've been working with the Parks Department on establishing locations to install them around the city, hopefully later this summer. Um, this is a new and exciting step for Green Bay uh, to embrace the literary arts and include poetry in our everyday lives. Uh, and I just want to thank this year's poets for truly making a mark in our community. Thank you. Yes, thanks to you all for making art in our community and uh, having the confidence to display it. Really appreciate that. And now we are on to appointments. We have a motion. Second. Motion by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to confirm the appointment of Sandra Rank to the Broadway Business District and Jamie Wall to the Water Commission. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Public hearings. We're now on to public hearings, and we have six items for public hearings. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to any of these items? Anyone here who would like to speak to these items? Is there anyone here who would like to speak to these items? Clerk, please let the record reflect that no one appeared to speak to these items. We're on to ordinances, second reading for adoption. You may under suspension of the rules take up items one through three with a roll call vote. Suspend. Motion made by Alder from the first, first, second by Alder from the seventh to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. I'll entertain a motion to adopt items K1 through K3. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 10th to adopt items K1 through K3. Please use the board.
Motion passes 11 to 1. A few technical difficulties here, but Mike wants me to assure you all that it is not civic clerk related. <laughs> On item L, report of the Redevelopment Authority, July 9, 2019. What are your wishes regarding this report? Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve report L, which is the report of the Redevelopment Authority from the meeting on July 9, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Three. Any others? Item three will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved, with the exception of item three. What are your wishes regarding, regarding item three? Second. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first to approve. The item was pulled by the Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dr. Vonk, um, appreciate the time you took this afternoon to answer several of my questions. I knew there was one more, and this was it. So I apologize if we're airing this out in public, something that could, you could have just answered very clearly. But uh, the, uh, when we talk about uh, the extension of a TID by an additional year that can be used for uh, affordable housing projects, could you just explain to me how, if at all, uh, the closing of these uh, TIDs affect that process? And does that, does that require you to come back to council if we want to uh, extend that for an additional year? Sure, so the resolutions before you tonight uh, authorize the RDA to basically perform the activities to do what's mentioned here. Um, traditionally by state statute, the plan commission uh, handles tax increment districts. Uh, here though in the city, the uh, RDA has historically been designated that entity um, just because they are the ones also involved in making the development agreements. Um, and so we go through and, and authorize by resolution uh, the RDA to perform the, these activities. Um, what will happen then is uh, staff will work on preparing uh, recommendations based on this. Um, with that, these recommendations then will be presented to the Joint Review Board, um, who then uh, we'll pass them on to the city. Uh, the Redevelopment Authority will hold a public hearing, uh, vote on these, or make a recommendation to City Council, um, and then City Council uh, will vote on these before they go back to the JRB for final adoption. So these will happen this summer. As far as the um, extension for the affordable housing, um, this is a, a part of the state legislation. Um, it's not used very often, uh, but basically allows a municipality, um, once all of the project costs for a TID have been paid off, either um, they're gone, developers agreements, infrastructure, um, once those have all been closed out and there's no additional expenses, you are allowed uh, to keep that tax increment district open one more year, uh, collect that increment, and put it into a fund that is designated for affordable housing. Um, so what we would like to do or are recommending is some of the uh, tax increment districts um, that are scheduled to close, uh, we would like to put a sunset date on uh, for closing those, um, having them open one more year for affordable housing, uh, and then be fully terminated. Um, in terms of the, the impacts, the ones that we're looking at, at closing that would do this um, would be District 7, District 8, um, and District 12. Um, even with adding that additional year for affordable housing, um, we're looking at a process that would um, either end 2020, affordable housing in 2021, um, and then full closure in 2022, um, or a year out. Uh, Director Ellen Beck and I are just kind of going through the numbers to see where they all uh, match up. With that, um, all of these tax increment districts will end before their mandatory closure time. So, um, you know, even with that extra year in there for affordable housing, they're still going to then, uh, the new taxes, incremental taxes, come back to the taxing jurisdictions um, before their mandatory term date. Uh, does approval of this, uh, this item tonight authorize you to extend that TID by one additional year on the, or these three TIDs by one additional year? It authorizes us to prepare a plan to bring back to you for final authorization. Understood. Thank, mm -hmm. you. Any other requests to speak? Yes. Alder from the fourth. 
Thank you. Um, Dr. Vonk, how much money are we talking about um, by extending those three TIDs for one year? Um, based on our, our current projections, um, based on the increment of the time that they would be closed, so whether that's the end of calendar year 2019 or the end of calendar year 22, if some additional projects come on, um, running a year of increment could get us somewhere around one and a half to two million dollars into that fund. And if these uh, TIDs weren't extended for one year, that'd be one and a half to two million dollars going towards the, the levy. Correct. So in, in terms of the, the increment then, well, I take that back, going towards the levy of the taxing jurisdictions. So we would get our share of that. So those numbers are based on the full tax rate. So that's our tax rate, the county tax rate, the school district tax rate, and the uh, technical college tax rate, which is about 2232. I'm going to look at 2338. 2338. Um, it's gone up a little bit. Um, so of that, um, that increment goes back to the taxing jurisdictions. So um, we would only receive 9, oh. 916 or 36%. So just under a million dollars the would be missing or gone or being used for other things that we could have been using for our levy. One year. And part of the, the way we looked at it is, um, you know, right now we do, we bond for neighborhood enhancement. And that neighborhood enhancement program, um, you know, funds a lot of affordable housing projects in our community. If we could find a way to defer or delay or reduce the amount of bonding we do for that um, and use the tax increment from these districts to help, um, you know, capitalize that fund, we felt that would be a, a trade off in terms of this is increment coming in, um, could capitalize it, and we wouldn't having to be paying the, the debt service. So instead of bonding for 900000 we'd be using this money. It would be up to um, the council to approve some parameters in terms of, of, of what this affordable housing fund um, would cover. Um, you know, like we do now, council approves the neighborhood enhancement program and generally some categories for, for allocations um, and lets the RDA administer it. Um, most likely we would do the same with a, a housing fund and saying, look, it's going to be used and maybe split for these different programs. Um, but that would be authorized by, by this council and how that money would be spent. If it went just for housing, then we could put... Uh there's many lots, some in my district, that have been empty for quite a bit of time. So we could put up housing that would then be taxed and bring more revenue into our city. Correct. All right, thank you. Sure. Any other requests to speak? Seeing no other requests, all in favor of the motion to approve item three, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Item M, report of the Improvement and Services Committee, July 10, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 1st, seconded by Alder from the 7th to approve Report M, which is the Report of the Improvement and Services Committee from the meeting on July 10, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Great. Any other items? Item 3 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved with the exception of item 3. What are your wishes regarding item 3? Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th. The item was pulled by Alder from the 9th. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I just think that uh, the original language that was on this, we worked with the law department to clean up that language a little bit. There's a copy of that that was placed on each Alder's uh, setting. So I guess we would just ask that um, tonight that we approve the Safe Park Initiative. That would be the request, and I, I think that would be the motion. Uh, but give staff uh, the ability, I guess, to kind of work with the language uh, that's around there. I think uh, just the law department has just, uh, they've captured the essence of the program. They've just dusted it up to make it a little bit cleaner uh, and easier to understand. So, um, and w with that, I, th I, I think there, I mean, there is somebody here. I would motion, make a motion to open the floor. Sure, yeah. Motion made by Alder from the 9th, second by Alder from the 3rd to open the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The floor is open. And please state your name and address. Hi, uh, Don Meldy, uh, 641 North Huron Street, Depeer, Wisconsin. Uh, President of the Brown County Tavern League. Um, just want to thank Alder Johnson and 
Grenier and everybody that helped participate to make this uh, what it is right now. I'm here to answer uh, any questions if anybody has any. Does this thing work when I push? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Alder from the fourth. Thank you. Um, and obviously, I, I don't think there's anyone that's not interested in reducing the amount of intoxicated drivers on our streets. Um, we have the, the taxi cab program, and that's administered by the Tavern League. And where do the funds come from for that? Uh, for the Safe Bike program? Yes. That is uh, through matching funds. We raise money, and it's price matched by the Department of Transportation. And the Department of Transportation gets that from non tax Paying dollars. It's actually um, $78 out of every OWI conviction goes towards helping the Safe Ride program throughout the state of Wisconsin. Um, the last year, there was 91,194 Safe Rides in the state. So that's 250 drunk drivers off the road each day. In Brown County, it's got the new results in. We're at 4,062. That uh, tripled in size over the last two years. So things are trending in the right direction. I think this is a, an effective tool to kind of keep things going to reducing drunk driving around the state. They've done away with the problems they had before where it was uh, taverns were giving out free rides to friends, co-workers, things like that. I mean, is that monitored or how's that? It's strongly monitored by myself, my treasurer, and uh, the Safe Ride coordinator in the county as well. Um, I also work to integrate Lyft into the Safe Ride program that uh, can be used throughout the state now. And that does a much better job of looking digitally to see exactly how many rides people have used per week, making sure it wasn't a, um, being used inappropriately, basically, a lot easier to monitor. No, no, not in a long time. So out of the 4,000 that we've had in the last year, roughly, that was a one time per person? Yeah. Um, well, it can be used up to two times per week per person. We don't want them to use it more than twice per week because we don't want people to overutilize it. Okay, twice uh, per week. That's just a rule that we have in county. It differentiates by county. But we try to monitor things to make sure that it's being used responsibly. Are we going to have something like that with the parking restriction? Correct. So I'm working with the city of Green Bay Police Department right now, and we're going to have those numbered. And we're going to give out certain numbers to different bars, and the parking division is going to circle back with me and monitor how many is being used. Uh, a good advantage also is if there is a, a tavern that has like 14 of these or something outside after a night, then we can call that tavern and say, hey, we think people are being overserved at your establishment. You might want to watch that a little more closely. And why, why can't all taverns um, in Brown County, I mean, we're trying to reduce intoxicated driving why can't all taverns be part of this I, I think for right now it's uh it's good that we handle this with brown county tavern league taverns uh we have a very responsible group of people that i can maintain and coordinate with and if we have every single tavern using it it's gonna be hard for me to reach out it could be used inappropriately and i wouldn't be able to follow up with it as effectively and another follow-up uh, question i have um so the tavern league has been all for safe rides they're all for this safe parking what else has the Tavern League done to reduce uh, over-serving uh, in their establishments and the amount of intoxicated drivers? And what have they done legislation-wise to try and increase uh, penalties and, and things like that for intoxicated drivers? Uh, that's a, a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I'm just Brown County, but uh, I also am part of the Brown County Traffic Safety Commission, and I help oversee the Place of Last Drink initiative that's been happening for the past year and a half, which monitors where people were drinking last, whether it be at a house or home, <coughs> refused or other, and that's held quarterly. Um, I also am part of the uh, Brown County Alcohol Drug Coalition for Change. So I sit in with them and talk about different legislations in the municipal level and things that we're working on to help reduce drunk driving around the area. So this isn't just a way of rewarding people that go out and drink too much. There actually is some, uh, not necessarily science, but there's some work going on behind the scenes to try and, re I guess, better educate taverns so they're not over-serving. Taverns and patrons alike. Right. So what I'm doing is working with the parking division. This is more of a, a reactive approach if somebody made the wrong choice and say, hey, I don't want to get behind the wheel. Um, this isn't necessarily rewarding that. It's basically helping people that didn't have a choice, people that are driving on the roads and don't have to face that person. Now that they decided not to drink and drive for fear of a parking ticket. Um, I'm working with the city parks department or parking division on making an interactive map of places you can park around the city because there are a lot of places to park. But we have to educate taverns and patrons alike that you can park places and not have to worry about getting a parking ticket overnight and be able to celebrate responsibly. I guess finally, uh, when you tell me that they're allowed two cab rides a week, to me, I guess if I was getting intoxicated at a point where I was getting two cab rides a week, do you find that troublesome? Um, depends on what happens if somebody goes out to certain establishments, uh, if they have a pool night or if they have dark league or if they do other things around the area. Um, not necessarily. And if 
it's more than that, then, I mean, we have to raise so much money to price match this for the Department of Transportation that we have to fund it on our end. So we ask people, you know, be responsible, get a designated driver, uh, get a cab in or a Lyft ride or an Uber into your favorite establishment so you can practice, you know, driving responsibly. Well, I, I guess my point is uh, you're, you're looking at this parking issue to try and see if there is problem uh, establishments and that maybe they could tighten things up. And we certainly don't want to make people afraid to ask for a ride or, or for a parking permit, but you don't see an issue with a, an individual that's becoming intoxicated to the point that twice a week they need to take a cab ride home. Um, me, not personally. This isn't necessarily to, um, to watch over taverns. This is mostly for people that, you know, hey, I made a mistake. I don't want to drive my vehicle home. I want to be able to leave it on the street overnight and not have to risk in a parking ticket and to be able to combat that. I guess you're missing my point, or maybe I'm not understanding your answer. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because I'm asking you if you to think that's a problem. It's, it's an establishment is over-serving a person to the point where they need a ride home twice a week. Point of order, is that really the agenda items that we're talking about? Are, are we not talking about the safe parking? I mean, I, I've been on the, that other committee, so I know that's a whole separate. Um, there's a lot more to it, Alder Galvin. I just want to make that as a point of order, but you, you guys no, decide. Point taken. I apologize. Thank you. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to, to piggyback on a question that Alder Galvin stole from me. Um, the, uh, uh, this is just a pilot program, correct? So that, I mean, we're working with the Tavern League to get it going, and if it works out, then it can be extended to uh, other taverns, that are, even if they're not in the league, correct? That's correct. Yep. yep. Okay. Thanks. Any other Speakers? All right. Thank you, Mr. Meldy. Motion made by Alder from the 9th, seconded by Alder from the 10th to close the floor. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor? Yeah. Alder from the 9th. I just want to thank uh, Don. Uh, it, as well as, uh, we, I guess through this process, we had met with uh, the PD, we had met with the parking division, um, the Brown County Tavern League, uh, and you know, we kind of thoroughly vetted this and, and fleshed out a number of different scenarios, um, making sure that we weren't rewarding certain behaviors, but uh, creating a responsible option for those folks who chose not to get behind the wheel, uh, keeping overall public safety uh, first in mind. And, and that includes people who weren't out drinking that night. And I think it's also to point out that this this program is, uh, I believe, unique to the state. One of only a handful of uh, a handful of these exists in the country. And one of the reasons that it is unique is because the city of Green Bay currently uh, maintains overnight parking restrictions. Other cities do not have that, and so that is why this program is something that is being proposed. Um, and in the very, I guess, core of this particular program is that three to five period. And so that's all we're looking to waive. So when you look at things like parking in meters, parking in two hour stalls, um, other areas that create problems, if individuals park in those areas and that meter kicks in at 8, 8 a.m., they're still you know, subject to, to a parking citation. So the only thing that this is doing is waiving that three to 5 a.m. parking restriction uh, in areas where, where parking is allowed. So I just kind of wanted to point that out because that was a question that had been brought up to me frequently. I obviously urge your support. Uh, for this particular program because again, it's it's not the end-all be-all it is not a solution But I think anytime that we can give people an opportunity to make an easy decision. I think we ought to do that Thank you Alder. Alder from the 10th Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I'd like to commend uh, Don and Alder Johnson and, and Alder Dorf. Alder Weary as well. He worked on this several years back I was involved a little bit and some of the other Alders have been too so I think it's a very big concern for many of us but I, I'm thankful that we have some leadership now and that we're moving forward with it. And uh, thank you to all who are involved. So. Alder from the fourth. Yeah, I just had one more question. I noticed that we have um, some wording about parking in metered or downtown parking restricted areas. Um, and I don't know where every tavern is in Green Bay, but there's also areas that are restricted by time. And it, would that hold true for those areas also? Yes? All right, thank you. All right. 
So given the debate here, I think we're going to use the board. Motion passes 12-0. Honorary uh, item N, report of the Protection and Policy Committee, June 24th, July 8th, July 9th, and July 12th, 2019. Motion by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve report N, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meetings on June 24th, July 8th, July 9th, and July 12th, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Items. Items 17 and 11 will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved with the exception of items 17 and 11. What are your wishes regarding item 17? Approved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 8th to approve item 17. Item was pulled by Alder from the 9th. I pulled 11. Oh, 11. Alder from the 8th. Apologies. 11, 17. I'm on 17. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, on this item, I wanted to really thank the residents of that area for putting uh, their efforts and concern really out there. They're the ones who brought this forward. You know, I'm just their voice piece. And they, I want to thank the police. You know, they met with the neighborhood. They met with a lot of individuals. They did it by email, by phone, in person. They did a really great job of pulling together the data um, and, and having some, some great ideas that came out at committee. Um, for Mason to Shano, you know, it was a pretty dense housing area along Western Avenue. And maybe someday we need to look at, uh, you know, bringing that down a little bit. But we just need to stay vigilant on holding property owners account accountable, you know, with the abatement plans, you know, nuisance properties, things of that nature. There's a lot of good people over there. There's just a few bad apples. Um, as we saw with the data, it's uh, what happened recently in this last year were really some aberrations, I think, not, not uh, indicative of what always happens over there. So uh, in, instead of, I know if you just read the report, it looks like we're not really doing anything with this. So I... I'd like to make the motion just to strike the receive in place on file and at the very end to put to approve the measures suggested at committee by the police department. And, then, and there were some great ideas that we can start proactively in, in, in looking at this. So thank you. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to reprove, approve the measures recommended by the police. A uh, motion made by Alder from the 8th, seconded by Alder from the 10th. We'll signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. We are on item 11, Alder from the 9th. Mm -hmm. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st. Thank you, Mayor. Just a, a quick question for legal. Um, as I'm looking at item uh, number 4C, it's one of the following conditions that exist. The applicant held a city-issued regular license of the same type during the expiring licensing year and did not timely submit a renewal application as a result of excusable neglect on the part of the applicant. If I'm not mistaken, excusable neglect is a legal term. Could you just kind of explain what qualifies as excusable neglect? Yes, legal or uh, excusable ne neglect is a legal term. It's used by courts in determining whether or not uh, certain actions or inactions by either an attorney or a plaintiff or defendant, a party to an action, um, are something that would merit excusing of the rules. And so the things that have, have ultimately been, have been um, things that would qualify for excusable neglect. Um, so one of the most recent cases that I've seen it happen in, um, a person asked for um, an extension of time to submit a witness list or an expert list 
and they claimed excusable neglect because they had been um, going through cancer treatments. The court concluded that yes, um, going through cancer treatments excused it the first probably two or three months that they were doing it, not the nine months that it took because by then they should have been able to go and talk to somebody to get somebody else to, or at least tell the court, you know, what's going on. So excusable neglect is a standard that allows people in instances where there is something really just preventing them from being able to do it um, to, uh, it gives them an, an, an ability to waive the strict compliance. Um, but it also has that, you know, it's, it's kind of a weighing what is really appropriate, like what was appropriate neglect versus what was just you weren't doing what you needed to. So thank you for that clarification. And I guess if I'm not mistaken, state statute does require us to have a local ordinance that defines how provisional licenses are, are issued. Is that correct? What state statute requires is that we issue provisional licenses. It says that we may adopt an ordinance that governs how we do that. Adopt and so so this is before us today because we're opting to exercise the May. Correct. Um, okay, so in instances of inexcusable neglect, I don't know if that's a real legal term, but somebody says, "Oops, I didn't do what I was supposed to do." Is that does does that qualify under this? And do we see uh, any dangerous precedents that might be created uh, from having, I guess, an ordinance that would allow that? I'm just trying to figure out, like, if there's not a penalty to get something done on time, is, is that a bad thing? It's really, it really is genuinely a question. So there are a couple things that we are trying to do. Um, as you guys are aware, we're trying to, to redo Chapter 33 as a whole. And when we do that, we're going to be building in uh, a, a more realistic time frame for people to actually be getting their licenses renewed and also for staff to be able to respond to those. Um, with that, the intent would be that once people, if they're able to meet the time frame, um, you know, give them four months to get it completed, then they're just doing it under the, the normal process. If they're doing it past that deadline, they're asking for a rush, and so there's a, a, a fee associated with it. This would be allowing instances where they didn't even meet that rush period. Now, as far as us choosing to an, an excusable neglect standard, I think this is appropriate because it is a standard that even the courts ad have adopted. Um, it is something that we, do, we can look to for judicial guidance on the types of instances where they have ruled that it's appropriate versus where it's just plain neglect. And so I don't think that we're creating any kind of new standards for this. We are, we're working off of something that is workable, um, even in a judicial context, um, where appeals are highly likely. And we aren't creating anything where we are setting the city up or the residents up for failure because we are, we are looking to amend all of Chapter 33 as a whole to kind of address some of those issues that have already been happening. Thanks again, Vanessa, for that, that clarity. Um, I do support this. I just wanted some clarification on some of those things. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there were about uh, 20 establishments in the city this year, roughly for a variety of reasons, that hadn't met that deadline. It's my understanding that year over year there tends to be a list. This year was maybe a few more than what we have been accustomed, but I also understand that staff did a very good job with reaching out to a number of those establishments proactively without having to. And I do want to thank staff for doing that because that 20 could have easily been 40 had they not taken those steps. And so in addition to, I mean, what we're, we're taking up here, obviously, which is ordinance and is something that will be codified, I want to uh, continue to encourage our staff uh, to do that proactive outreach because I think that's the level of customer service that uh, we ought to provide and that I, I think uh, our citizens expect. And, and again, I just I want to commend the staff for doing just that. Uh, that that's all. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, Alder from the 7th. Yes, just quickly, I, I also want to thank staff. Um, uh, we worked uh, a couple weeks ago um, trying, bending over backwards, trying to work out some of these issues with late uh, uh, renewals, and there was nothing we could do because we had no ordinance. This will uh, uh, empower us to be able to do our job better and it does have it is well written it uh, staff has done a great job putting this together and i really appreciate that and uh, i think it does safeguard us from enabling bad businesses behaving badly but there are definitely instances where there's an oops for any number of reasons and we should be able to take that into account and be able to act 
accordingly, which before we couldn't, now we can. So thank you. Thanks for all those meetings, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to approve item 11, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Item O, report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Approved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve report O, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Any names for which you'd like to be recorded as abstaining? Alder from the ninth. Thank you. Uh, two names, Tawny Casey and Daniel Wyatt. They both report directly to me. Any other names? Alder from the second. Uh, Tina Corpus, relation. Repeat those two. Alder from the ninth. Can you repeat the names? Tawny Casey and Danielle Wyatt. Thank you. Okay, we have those abstentions recorded. Any names under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Noting the abstentions. P, report of the Planning Commission, July 8, 2019. Approved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 4th to approve report P, which is the report of the Planning Commission from the meeting on July 8, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Any other items? Item P will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have and the report has been approved with the exception of item one. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth. Alder from the twelfth. Thank you, Mayor. I just would like to be noted as abstaining from the vote. I'm connected through employment. Very good. Abstention is noted. Any other requests to speak? Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to approve item one, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Q, report of the Finance Committee. Oh, wait. <laughs> your, your abstention has still been noted. <laughs> we got it. Uh, item Q, report of the Finance Committee, June 18th and July 9th. Motion to approve, made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th, to approve report Q, which is the report of the Finance Committee from the meetings on June 18th and July 9th. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. R, report of the Park Committee. Approved. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 8th to approve report R, which is the report of the Park Committee from the meeting on July 10th, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. S, report of the Personnel Committee. Motion, motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st, to approve report S, which is the report of the Personnel com Committee from the meeting on July 9, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Item two. Any other items? Item two will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved with the exception of items two. What are your wishes regarding item two? Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth. Item was pulled by Alder from the fourth. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd actually like to make an amendment to this. Um, but the amendment would be, would be to add the word religion following the word creed in both uh, section 111D and 1112. Motion made by Alder from the 4th, seconded by Alder from the 12th to amend the motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The item has been amended. Any
any other requests to speak on the item? All right. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion as amended, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. T, report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Committee, June. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to approve Report T, which is the Report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission from the meeting on June 17, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Three. Item three will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item three. Wishes regarding item three. Motion, motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 6th. Item was pulled by Alder from the 3rd. Thanks, Mayor. I was approached by um, um, a constituent lady that lives on the corner of Juniper and um, Laura, I believe. She has a... Is that Lila? No. That's where you were parked. So I was approached by a constituent lady who um, lives on the corner of Juniper and Laura. Right now you have yield signs um, going east and west on Juniper and no signs on um, Laura Street. When I uh, visited this lady in June, she has a uh, very severe handicapped son that she's worried about with traffic, which I thought was very important, and I brought it towards the, um, well, the traffic commissioner. But anyway, she was wondering with a, just basically security, a peace of mind, and just living secure in her own neighborhood. She's asked me if, we, if it's possible to uh, change the signs to stop. So I said, well, I'll talk, her, talk to our uh, traffic commissioner, Dave Hansen, which I did. Um, and Dave actually recommended to have a four-way stop or change the signs on Laura Street. But I said, well, why don't we just take baby steps and just have a stop sign on uh, Juniper where there's yield signs right now. And he said, that's a good idea. That's what he told me over the phone, okay? I did not go to the meeting. It's received and placed on file. I call up Dave. Dave stated that um, there's no crash history. That's basically the gist. I'm like, okay, thank you. Um, it's a recommendation. So what I'd like to do is uh, make a motion with the, um, I mean, I did talk to other neighbors, and they don't have a problem with it. Um, what I'd like to do is um, make a motion to change the yield signs to stop signs. And the reason is, is that if there is a constituent, and it, the person could be living in any of the 12 districts with a, um, an issue that she has, I believe it would be basically a very inexpensive, quick fix that she can live in the neighborhood and feel safe. And I mean, the signs are already made. We have the signs. And we do have labor that works during the week. So basically, it's not going to be an expensive issue to change two signs. So that is my request and that is my motion, Mayor. Thank you. The motion made by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the ninth to change the two way yield condition on Juniper Drive at Laura Street to two-way stop condition. Any further comments? Yeah, I have, uh, if, if I can continue. Yep. Alder from the third. You know, I've, I've heard the arguments where, well, they don't stop for yield signs. Why would they stop for stop signs? Well, matter of fact, I really don't stop for yield signs. But you know what? I do stop for stop signs, so I'm one person in the whole wide world that actually looks at a stop sign compared to a yield sign. And with law enforcement background that I have, um, I just don't have 
the confidence in yield signs, especially the predicament that uh, is on Lauren Juniper. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I did serve on the traffic commission for two years, and um, there there is a lot that goes into making these decisions, and there are many, many requests that come to traffic to put up stop signs. We would have a lot more stop signs around our city if every one of those requests were approved. I believe the appropriate place for this is not to vote on this tonight, but to send this back to committee, because it sounds like there was a mixed message sent um, when Alder, the Alder from the third spoke with the chief traffic engineer. It sounded like things were gonna be fine and he didn't go to the meeting. I don't blame him. It's, there's uh, lots of meetings, but it didn't turn out that way. So um, I, my motion would be to send this back to committee, which I think does that super, this supersedes the motion that's on the floor if I get a second. Second. Motion made by Alder from the first, second by Alder from the seventh to uh, refer item three back to committee. Any further discussion? Alder from the seventh. Yes, sir. I, I was going to also make uh, that recommendation because um, it sounds like the issue wasn't addressed at all and that maybe there might be other ways to address it. I know there are uh, neighborhoods that have signage of, uh, depending upon the handicap, uh, what the handicap is, warning people of a handicapped child. So whether maybe... Point of, point of order, that is uh, not a correct statement. Can I have the mic, please? Mr. Mayor. According to Dave Hansen, we have an ordinance that we that the city does not provide that anymore. That's what I was told by our traffic commissioner. Director Grenier? That's correct. Alder from the seventh. I was not aware of that. Okay. Um, well then, um, it still sounds well, I guess I still support referral in that it sounds like they looked at traffic history when it was it wasn't really a, a traffic history issue, perhaps, I don't know. I thought there might be other possibilities here. I wasn't aware that that <clears throat> had changed. Why, why, Before you were, um, why did we it, it was just, it, it was one of the issues with Dave Hansen. We passed it, we don't have it anymore. It was years ago, Randy. Okay. Alder from the 7th has the floor. All right. I'm sorry. I'm yep, nope. To explain it. Yep. Alder from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think we can resolve this here tonight. Uh, I'm opposed to referring it back. This is such a, a small item in the scheme of things, and I guarantee you it'll come right back with the same recommendation. So uh, nobody, I mean, we all know this, nobody knows your, your districts and your neighborhoods better than the older person, honestly. And, and if such a small fix like this can address something, what are we doing? So uh, I, I urge just to vote no and just, just fix it tonight. Thanks. Alder from the 11th. I'm not for a referral on this, Mayor. I think we should vote on it tonight and get it resolved. I think that, you know, the request has been put forward and it sounds like Mr. Hansen didn't get back to Mr. Nicholson or Mr. Nicholson didn't get back to Mr. Hansen, but I, I think the jest is there that they'd like to put the sign up. I think let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the 9th. I'm, I'm going to vote against referral as well, mostly because I think, again, it's, it is a recommendation that comes from the committee, and if we're going to send it back to come back with another recommendation, it just seems like a little bit of a redundant process. Alder from the 10th. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm also against referral. Uh, I went out with Alder Nicholson and did, did look at that intersection, and I believe that he does have an issue that needs to be resolved, so I'm against referral as well. Alder from the third, you still? Thanks, Mayor. Yeah. I'm not going to support referral. Um, it's an easy fix. It's not a major issue here. We're not talking about thousands of dollars. Um, just asking for the courtesy of the alder, other aldermen in the city of Green Bay to grant two stop signs. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alder. Alder Vanderbilt. All right. With no additional speakers, uh, we're going to go with a roll call here. We're going to use the board, although we can't display it. Uh, we'll use the board on this motion to refer.
motion fails. Eight to four. So the motion on the floor is to change the two-way yield condition on Juniper Drive at Laura Street to a two-way stop condition. Motion was made by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the ninth. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. You guys have it. Item has been approved. You reported the Sustainability Commission June 12, 2019. What are your wishes regarding this report? Motion made by Alder from the seventh. Seconded by Alder from the sixth to approve report U, which is the report of the Sustainability Commission from the meeting on June 12, 2019. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Report of the Tax Incremental Districts Joint Review Committee, June 27, 2019. What are your wishes regarding this report? Motion made by Alder from the first, seconded by Alder from the seventh to approve report V, which is the report of the Tax Incremental District Joint Review Committee from the meeting on June 27, 2019. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The report has been approved. Receive in place on file. Motion made by Alder from the <laughs> motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the fifth, to receive in place on file the building permit report and municipal court report for June 2019. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of approving the report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been received and placed on file. Resolutions. You may under suspension of the rules adopt resolutions 1 through 28 together with one roll call vote. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 8th to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion, motion made by Alder from the 7th. Seconded by Alder from the 8th to adopt resolutions 1 through 28. Please use the board. I got a quick question, please. Alder from the third. Can I just, can you take this off so I can just read? I believe it's 11. We're on resolutions, correct? Correct. Okay. Can you take that off, please? Take what off, Alder? Perfect. Whoever did that, thank you. Got it. Okay. All there you have the floor. Can someone give us the gist of number 11, please? Director Vonk? <laughs> sure. Um, so this is, this bonding is a, a TIF supported bond uh, to continue development of the, the shipyard redevelopment project. Uh, this goes back to the, the 10 million we authorized. We've tried to be fiscally responsible, and instead of taking all 10 million at once, we're taking chunks. Thank you. Sure. Why? No, why wouldn't it be like number 11? Why wouldn't it be written up with the uh, project name in the resolution? It seems deceiving. That's all. I mean, when you read it in the public, Director Ellen Becker. I mean, does it or? Um, I, we printed it the way our bond council had to put the resolution together. Um, if that's your request, we could put more information um, in there to explain it more in our terms of this is going to be a TIF for the shipyard project and then add that additional information to it in the future resolutions. Could you do that? Because I mean, I, I know the public, I know, well, right off the bat, I could name at least two individuals that will read it that live in District 3 that's going to say, what's this all about? Is there a way you can put the project in yes. so they know it's for the ship there project? Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mayor. That's all I have. Thanks, Alder. Uh, using the board.
Those pass 11 to 1. Ordinances, first reading. I'll entertain a motion to advance item 1 to a second and final reading. First reading. First reading. Oh, for, to advance. Yep. Okay. Motion made by Alder from the 10th. Second by Alder from the 7th to advance. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it and know that item has been advanced to the final reading. Z, referral of petitions and communications. Alder from the 6th. Um, yes, this is to, for the park board. Uh, due to safety concerns brought to my attention, I'm requesting that Bay Beach hire a security officer slash officers during hours or oper of operations with the cost coming from Bay Beach profit slash account. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the 12th. Thank you, Mayor. I have two, both the parks, to direct staff to study and prepare a report on the number of parks, including city, county, school, and Oneida own throughout the 12th district with the purpose of possibly locating property where the city can develop a new park and again also to parks for consideration with possible action to relocate the annual kitty carnival effective 2020 to other city parks possibly Colburn Park thanks Alder Alder from the fourth thank you your honor <laughs> this is for the uh, sustainability commission um, I was approached by a young man in college who's studying environmental issues and he'd like uh, them to investigate the feasibility of installing solar panels on the various closed landfills within our city. Thank you, Alder. Any other communications? Alder from the 10th. Thank you, Your Honor. I have several. This is to the parking utility to study and report out on the feasibility of utilizing the even odd residential address overnight parking scenario as is done in Milwaukee in order to relieve the parking problems at residences with limited parking spaces. This is for INS as well to look at a, placing a street light on the east side of Fellows Avenue just north of Shawano Avenue. The next two are to traffic bicycle and pedestrian. One is to look at placing a 20, 25 mile an hour signs on eastbound and westbound Bond Street between Military Avenue on the west and Fisk Street on the east. And the last one is to look at placing signs that read state law yield to pedestrian and crosswalk on the west side trail at Military Avenue and at Shawano Avenue. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Alder from the 9th. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to have to lean on staff to provide some clarity on this, but uh, to consider forgiveness of uh, the Broadway loan made to Cup of Joy, and that's to the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, it's that Broadway revolving loan fund. Any other communications? Clerk, do you have any late communications? I do not. I'll entertain a motion to refer all petitions and communications. Motions, motion is made by Alder from the 7th, second by Alder from the 1st to refer all late petitions and communications to the proper authority. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and those petitions and communications have been referred. Adjournment. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, second by Alder from the 3rd to adjourn. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. <laughs>